Hello, my name is David Broussard and welcome back to the Office 365 Bootcamp. In this section, we're gonna talk about personal collaboration and what that means. Now, personally, I like to divide up collaboration into three basic categories. Uh, there's structured collaboration, which is what organizations do There's uh, at an organizational level. There is ad hoc collaboration, which is what small groups and teams of people do when they need to work on something. And then there's the stuff that we do all the time, and that's what I call personal collaboration. And that's where I'm working on documents that are for me that I will eventually share with other people. Um, and, and, and the question is, where do I do all of that personal collaboration? Well, the answer is in a lot of different places. Uh, I may do it in email. I may create a document, attach it to an email, and send it to somebody. I might store it in my OneDrive uh, and then share it with people that way. And what Microsoft has done with Office 365 is provided me with a lot of tools to make my personal collaboration very quick, very easy, very powerful. So let's take a look at a few of those things. So we're looking at the Office 365 launch screen over here. And you can see I've got a lot of different apps out there. Well, I mentioned email to start with. I can go ahead and click on the mail icon over here, and it's going to go out and load up Outlook for me. And when I look at Outlook, this looks very similar to what I have on the desktop, right? I, I'm used to working with Outlook all the time. And by the way, you can continue to use Outlook uh, on your desktop as well. It, a lot, all these features are there. When I'm looking at this, though, and I say, you know, if, if I've got a document and I, wanna, and I want to share that information with somebody else, how do I go about doing that? Well, so let, let's play around with that. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to start Word, and I'm going to fire Word up, and we're going to go ahead and edit a document. So I'll take this blank document, and I see a blank, nice blank document here, and I'm going to say, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. One of my favorite phrases, right? Um, and when I'm done with this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save it, okay? And I'm just going to go ahead, and you'll notice, first thing, where does it ask me where I want to save it? It defaults it to saving it to my OneDrive. Now, the OneDrive is out on the cloud, right? And I have all kinds of sharing features. And so the first thing it's doing is saying, hey, let's store this out in a cloud location as opposed to on my actual laptop, because that way, uh, the, the document is going to be in multi, is going to be saved. It's going to be out in the cloud. It's going to be replicated. So I'll go ahead and say, great, I'm going to call this a uh, collab document. Okay? And I'm going to go ahead and save it. And I'm going to put it right out there in my OneDrive. Now, by doing that, it's out in the cloud, it's backed up, it's replicated for me, right? And that's very and that's very useful. Uh, it also means that if I go to a different computer or if I want to get to this from a kiosk or at home or something like that, I can still do so. I can demonstrate that by going to my OneDrive and we'll see here when I go and I refresh this screen that when I go to my OneDrive, there's this collab document that I went ahead and loaded, right? And if I click on that document, it's going to go ahead and open it up right here in a web browser for me and I can go ahead and see the information. And that, that's very useful as well. If I'm at an airport, if I'm flying someplace, if I'm at a hotel, I can go out and actually pull up the documents on computers that don't actually have Word installed on them. And I find that to be very useful. It also means, by the way, that I can pull it up on a, on a tablet or on a phone that doesn't have the Word client installed either. And I can still get to these documents and, and, and work with them. I can even edit them. So I'm going to go ahead and say I want to edit this in the browser. When I open this up and edit it in the browser, you'll see that I now am looking at a version of Word that's running in my web browser. And if I wanted to, I could go down here and I can add, now is the time for all good people to come to the aid of their country. And I've now made those changes. And if you'll see up here, it's saying that it's saving that document for me. Now, I don't have a save button in Word Online. I don't have a save button in Word Online because it saves the document for me pretty much constantly. This allows other people to get out there and actually use, and, and work on this document as well simultaneously. And in fact, if I wanted to, I could go back over here to my files and I could click on Collab Doc again. It's going to open it up a second time and you'll see that it actually is showing both lines of text. And if I go in here and edit this document here, you'll see that it's going to actually let me edit it twice. Uh, now, granted, it's still me editing it both times, right? 
But, well, here's this little red thing popped up over here, right? What was that red thing telling me? It's telling me that Eric Gruber, in this case me, is actually also editing this document. If I pop back over here to the other version, it's gonna show me that somebody's still editing this document. And I say, oh look, I misspelled the word. I'm gonna change that back to is. And you'll see it's already saved it. When I pop back over to here, you'll see that it shows me the little red line showing me where somebody else is editing this document and it's already made the change. Now, it, for many people, this isn't really all that great, right? You see it all the time anyway. If, if you're used to using web-based products, this kind of thing is no great shakes, right? Well, one of the things I like about this is I can actually go ahead and click on edit this in Word and it's gonna open this up in Word 2016. All right, so we're gonna open it up in Word 2016 and you're gonna see that I'm actually right in the document right now. Now what's, what's cool about this is it's gonna actually notice that other people are editing it right now and it's gonna allow me to automatically save my changes as they happen. So um, it's actually noticed that other people are working on this and now here I am in my Word document and you'll see that just like before, it's showing me that Eric Gruber is editing this uh, someplace else. And I can actually go over here in Word and I can add in some new information and I can say, um, hi there, I really like Microsoft Word 2016, okay? And what it's gonna do is it's gonna send those changes up to the server and then all of my other people that are working, whether they're working in Word 2016 or they're working in a, a, a version of Word Online, they will get those changes sent in to them. So if I pop back over here to one of these documents, you'll see, hey, look at that. It already updated that change. And if I go in there and say, I wanna highlight that with, in green, and I wanna make it bold, and I'm gonna go ahead and bump the font up really large, well, bump the font up really large, to say 24 point type, oh, I didn't have it highlighted. There we go, let's try bumping the font up really large now to something big. It's gonna save that, it's gonna update those changes and it's gonna send them back down to my Word uh, that I'm working on my desktop. Now that's a major step forward because you know not everybody is used to working in a web browser to go ahead and edit documents. I find it to be very easy because it's the 90% it, the of what I do, I can do in the web browser, which means I don't have to have a machine that has Word installed on it, which when I'm, as a technical person, hopping around on servers a lot of time and virtual machines, they don't always have Office installed and I can still get out there and edit documents. But now I can pop back over here to Word and you can see it hasn't quite caught up with the changes yet, but eventually it'll catch up with those changes and it'll send them down to my, to my system down here. Let's see if I can go ahead and force it to go ahead and update here. And there we go, I was able to force it to go out and update and you can see it went ahead and picked up those changes and brought them down. So this means that now I can actually be working on a document simultaneously with other people. And this is a key aspect of the, the whole area of personal collaboration. So in this case, I'm, I'm actually working with myself. So we don't normally do that, but we do work all the time with other people inside of our organization. So imagine that you're working on a report and you're working on certain pages or sections of that report and you need somebody else to go in and edit and fix another section of that report. With the co-authoring of features of Office 365 and uh, the Office Suite, you can actually do that where both of you are working on the document at the same time. In the old days, if I wanted to get that kind of information, I'd have to take that document I would have to email it to everybody, have them edit, that, their, have their, edit their changes and send it back to me, and then I've got to go through all of those changes and put them together into one document. Now, and, you know, now I can go ahead and put it out on a SharePoint site or a file share, right? But then I worry about people overriding changes, don't I? If you've ever gone out and, and put a file on a file share and send everybody the link out to everybody, when you do that, I send the file out, I send that link out, Let's say Bob opens that file up and starts editing it, and then Bob goes to lunch. Susie opens it up, makes some edits and changes. Bob comes back and hits save on his. Susie's changes just got writ overwritten and gone. With, uh, with the, the new powers inside of OneDrive for Business and inside of SharePoint and in Office 365 and the, and the Office Suite, we now have the ability to don't worry about that kind of thing anymore because Office will take care of it for you. When, when, I, when I go out, when Bob goes to lunch and Susie makes her edits and she saves her edits and Bob comes back and saves, it's going to go ahead and merge those changes all together and we don't have to worry about losing data at that point in time. 
All right, so how do I get, then actually share with other people? I've stored this out in my OneDrive, but how does anybody know that it's there? All right, so I've gone back into the, the web browser and I say, well, I've got this, I've got this document here. I want to work on it with multiple individuals. How do I do that? Well, in this case, I can just share the document. How do I share it? Well, here I am editing the document. There's this great big blue share button over here. I wonder what that does, you might say. If I click on it, it brings up an ability for me to share this collaboration document. And as you can see, I can type in a person's name. We'll type in Kelly, one of my coworkers. There she is, public relations representative. And I'll click on her name. I can choose, do I want her to be able to edit or view the document? Well, if I let her view the document, she can't edit anything, right? And I can go down here and say, hey, please update section two with your numbers. And of course, misspelled something, so we'll go on with that. And you can see that I can, I can require her to sign in before she gets the document, and I want to send her an email invitation. So when I share this, what's going to happen is OneDrive is going to take this document, it's going to set up the, per the permission so that Kelly can have access to this document as well, and then it's going to send her an email, and I'll go ahead and open that up to show you what it looks like. She's actually going to get an email that's been sent out, and let's see. If I can find the email that was out, there we go. Eric Gruber has shared Contoso document, a collab document. So she now gets a copy of this email sent to her. I get a copy as well, so I know I did it. And it says, hey, please update section two with your numbers. And from right here, she can click on that link, open it up in Word Online. She can review it, she can edit it, she can edit it in the browser, edit it in, her, in Word 2016 on the desktop, whichever she wants to do. But now, instead of me having to email that document to her, right, I've just gone ahead and shared it with her. Now, that's not how most people go out and do these things, is it? What most people do is they sit there in Word 2016 and they click on the file menu and get to the backstage and they go down here and click on the share button. And what you'll notice that Microsoft has done now is they're already saying, hey, don't you really want to share with people? You don't really want to email this to somebody, do you? And so I can click on the share with people and it's going to take me back over here and let me type in email addresses of who I want to share with. And you can see it's already telling me that Kelly already has access to this. And I could go in here and I could say, well, there's Alan Steiner and I want to get, let him have the view. And I say, please review and send me your thoughts. And I can say share. And now what's going to happen is Alan's going to have read access to this particular document. Okay. So that's a great way of, of sharing documents as well. Nice and simple and easy. But a lot of times we have documents and we still want to email them to people, right? So if I go down and click on this email, you'll see that I can still send this as an attachment. If I really, really want to, I can send it as an attachment. On the other hand, I could send it as a link. When I send a link, I'm essentially sharing the document. Everyone's getting a link to the document and they can work on that document. One of the advantages of, of sharing over emailing is that we're not clogging up our inboxes with a lot of, a lot of files. If you think about it, when I, if I email a document to five people, there's six copies out there in my sent items, in my sent items, and it's also in everybody else's received items. And when somebody hits reply to all, that's six more copies out there of that particular, of that document. And we're duplicating the document and eating up space, and we don't really want to do that. So instead, by sending a link, I, I don't have to merge changes back together, which is one big thing. And also, we're not clogging up uh, the email server with a lot of extra information. So what if I want to share this document with someone outside my organization? I can do the same kind of thing. I can click on the Share button. I can go ahead and, and then type in oops, an email address for somebody who isn't Uh, inside my organization. And when I select that, it's telling me, oh, by the way, this is outside your organization. You're now sharing this outside. I can decide whether I want that person to edit or view the document. And I can still give them, you know, here is your invoice uh, for the work we did. And I can require them to sign in, and I can send them that email message. And now what's going to happen is, just like when I shared with somebody inside my organization, I'm actually sent an email outside my organization. This particular document has been now shared with an external user. This allows me to work with people who aren't inside my organization. 
uh, which is, you know, we do that a lot. We do it through email all the time, right? But instead of me now emailing a document outside my organization and thus losing control of the document, I'm maintaining control of the document inside of my OneDrive, inside of my organization, and still allowing external users to read or even edit that document right from my OneDrive. So I can share with my, I can collaborate with other users inside my organization and collaborate with people outside of my organization all from OneDrive. Now, in this case, we've done it all from Word Online or from Word. I can also go out and do it right here from uh, the OneDrive space as well. If I want to take this document right here and share it, I can highlight it and I can click on the share button and you'll see a very familiar interface where I can go out and type in a person's name like Alan and say that I want to let share this with Alan and say, look at this and edit it and share the document and Alan will go ahead and get a link to that particular document that he can go and edit it with. Uh, the last thing that we can talk about is what if I have a document that's sitting down on my, my desk? All right, so I can download this document, for example, and I'm going to save it on my desktop. So I'll go ahead and save it on my desktop, and I'm going to go grab my desktop and save it over here. So now I've got a document that's sitting on my desktop. Okay? We, ha we do that a lot. We create documents all the time, and they're, and they're sitting out there. And I want to go ahead and share this document. So in this case, if I double click on this document and I open it up in Word, okay, it now knows that this is, you know, it, it, it says, oh, this isn't out there any place. It is actually out in, um, it is on, on this physical machine, right? If I want to email this someplace, when I go and click on share, the first thing it does is it says, hey, this isn't in the cloud. Let's save this out to the cloud and then we'll go ahead and share it with other people, okay? So that's a powerful thing that it's doing. Microsoft is actually encouraging us to put our files out in OneDrive and to share, the do share documents that way. But let's take another look here. I'm gonna go back to my email. So let's say I'm sitting here in email, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and send an email to my, co uh, to my coworker, Alan. So there's Alan. Oh, actually, I'm gonna send it to Alex instead because I mistyped, right? And I'm gonna say, look at this document. Okay, and I'm gonna click on attach. Now, when I go out and click on attach, it's gonna automatically go to my OneDrive and show me files in my OneDrive. And it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna share one of these that's already out here on OneDrive? That's what you wanna do, right? And I say, no, 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 I really wanna get a file off my computer. I'm gonna get this test co-author doc. And when I do that and select it, it's say, well, do you wanna attach it as a copy? No, we don't wanna do that. What we wanna do instead is, upload and attach this as a OneDrive file. So I'll go ahead and select that. And what it's gonna do is it's going to actually upload this document into the, an email attachments folder in my OneDrive and set it up. And you'll be able to see right here in my, in my email a little cloud icon that's next to the Word document. And that lets me know this particular document has been stored out in the cloud. And right now anyone can edit that document um, and you can see that I can, I can go out and change the permissions. And so if I don't want them to be able to edit it, I can say, you know what, I want recipients to only be able to view this document. So what have I done now? I've taken a document from my computer, I've attached it to an email, it's loaded it out to my OneDrive, and I've said, only can they view this document. They can't actually edit the document. Uh, and then when I'm done, I can go ahead and type in, hey there, and click send, and away it goes. And so what have I done? Uh, in this case, Alan, uh, Alex rather gets an email with a link in it, with a link in it for that particular document. And what he can do is he can edit, he can view that document, but because I set the permissions, he can't actually edit the document. Okay, so we've now talked about personal collaboration and I hope you've gotten a, a feel for the things that Microsoft provides us to enhance our personal collaboration. We've got tools such as OneDrive that let us store and share files both internally and externally in our organization. We've got Office Online where I can take PowerPoint and Excel and OneNote and Word documents and I can edit them in the browser and even co-author them with other people. I've got tight integration with 
Office on the desktop like Word 2016 and PowerPoint and OneNote where I can easily share files and you can see that even things like Outlook in the, uh, the email of Outlook is actually prompting me to put things out on my OneDrive to make it easier for me to share with other people. Hope you've enjoyed that and come back next time.